What's going on you guys? It's Perry the Entertainer back again for another video. In this video we're going to be reviewing most of the things that happened on last night's episode of Monday Night Raw that took place on July 14, 2014. But of course, as you guys have known for the last two weeks, we cannot do a Raw review without my special guest right here. Hit it up. Three weeks in a row. Uh, TWJ is here back. I'm Perry the Entertainer doing another Raw review. Let's get this thing started. It seems like this is just going to be a regular thing, isn't it? I guess so. I'm not even going to have to throw it to you anymore. They're going to just know you're here. That's great. I mean, I don't have a problem with that. Anything to get your channel some exposure, so. Yeah, I mean, it's not bad. I mean, What's I your channel, it. by the way? Oh, you're going to make me do it. Yeah, I'm going to make you do it, because you know people are watching right now. Yeah, uh, the rest of the uh, I'm sure Perry will link it in the description below. And mm -hmm. Everything will be. Yeah, all right, let's get the thing started. All right, we kicked off the show with WWE World Heavyweight Champion John Cena coming out to the ring. He is plugging the WWE Network on its final uh, day of the free preview thing that, that's been going on the whole entire week. You can sign up for the WWE Network, get yeah, a week of it for free. I've had it for about two months, so this didn't really take to me, but you're selling us, trying to sell us the WWE Network on the last day. Mind you, probably four hours before the trial is actually going to end. <laughs> that doesn't make but any But make sense. sure you sign up anyway. Yeah. Why? Mm. We're not entirely sure yet. I'm not even sure if they're going to if they're going to keep on that free preview thing. Like if they're going to do it again. I like the idea of having it the week before a pay per view, though. Right. Yikes. And I think it really worked though, because especially when with the main event. Yeah. Because main event was a good show last week. We had the great last man standing match with the U for the U.S. title, Sheamus and Del Rio. Again. That was a good match. Yeah. And we had again, Jericho. Hold oh, no, on. I'm, I'm sorry, but a Mexican and Mexican we, fighting for a title. We had the highlight reel. It was a good show, and I understand why WWE did that so that you can get people to buy the network and be like, oh, well, this show is going to be good all the time. I might as well get the network and watch it all the time, you know? Yeah. But you have seen him go out there. He's trying to sell you the network four hours before the trial is going to end. It makes no sense. Well, even when you know half the people in the arena aren't listening to a damn word you're saying, they're all on their phones texting away or tweeting away or checking their Facebook or something. But all phones were put away when Roman Reigns came down to interrupt him, create some animosity in between them to uh, create some drama. Going into the Fatal 4-Way for the WWE Undisputed title. Then we had Dean Ambrose interrupt them. And because the entire main event is going to be Cena, Reigns, and Ambrose versus Rollins, Kane, and Orton. So they were going to hype all that up. And then Orton, Kane, and Rollins ended up mugging. It was a legit mugging backstage. It wasn't a beatdown. That was a mugging yep. of Ambrose. And they beat the holy hell out of this kid. Tore up his clothes. You know, Rollins hit this double curb stomp onto this big box thing. It took Ambrose out. He had to be taken to a medical center. So it was going to be a three-on-two handicap match for our main event tonight. What did you got? What did you think about the opener? Uh, I thought it was a pretty good segment and uh, beat down or whatever you want to call it. I mean, it was really entertaining to see how uh, Rollins executed the curb stomp onto that wooden box. But what what made me like into it was when uh, during the beatdown, uh, Ambrose said, "Is that all, is that all you got?" And then that happened, and I was, I thought that was a pretty good uh, start of the show. I don't know. I liked that part where he did say, "You know, is that all you got?" But I felt that that just took away from the authority at all because mm -hmm. you're you're getting mugged backstage, and the last thing you want to say is that all, is that all you got? Well, you gotta know he's Ambrose. He, <laughs> He has a big mouth. Well, I understand that, but that doesn't that kind of seem to make the authorities attack kind of weak? Uh -huh. You have this demon. You have this guy who's been given everything by Triple H, and you have Randy Orton, who's got this you know Viper thing. Yeah. Three ruthless human beings backstage, and they're destroying you. And the last thing, and the thing you're gonna say is no, don't please stop or whatever. You know, hell, Cena and Reigns didn't even come in the damn thing. They didn't come to help them. Nope. They were standing in the freaking ring, like, picking their nose or something. They weren't <clears throat> doing a damn thing. They were just watching their partner get destroyed. And I yep. kind of liked that 
because then it kind of gives a possible reason or a possible explanation for a Dean Ambrose heel turn. Mm, I don't know about that, man. To be like, oh, you know, hey, I'm not going to come out to save you when you couldn't return the favor. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it could turn Dean Ambrose heel, side him maybe with Rain or with Rollins. I'm sorry, maybe that's not the direction they want to go, considering that's who he's feuding with now. But I don't know. I I I really want to take this storyline and I want to just kind of create magic with it. You know, because yeah. there's a lot of things that happen tonight that can be taken in a completely new creative direction, depending on what happens at Battleground. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a great pay-per-view, though. As for the opener, Ambrose did not necessarily save it. He kind of ruined it for me, and the only reason why I say he ruined it is because this was the start of having the Cena Reign stare down that we wanted. You know, the the current face, the current torch holder versus the future of the wrestling industry, you know? Yeah. And I think... Having Ambrose interfere, or not interfere, uh, you know, interrupt it, kind of took away from it, even though I do consider Ambrose the future of the company as well. Mm -hmm. You know, you can take that all sorts of ways. I personally saw Ambrose kind of as a um, a decoy, if you get what I mean. He kind of took away from it a little bit, but the beatdown made up for it, and I got to say the opener was pretty pretty well put together, I think. Yeah. And it's set up for the uh, future events to happen later on in the night, you know? Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, you want to talk about the show? Because a lot of it just kind of was build up for the IC title um, yeah. Battle Royale. I mean, that, that was the main thing on Raw tonight was the IC title. I mean, we found out that uh, Baton Square will be at Battleground to present the new champion of uh, the title. And I'm pretty sure how that's – I'm pretty positive about how that's going to go down. Uh I hope it's not a face turn. So, <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> yeah, bad news, Barrett. Face turn, huh? That's good news. Yeah, um, good news, Barrett. Good news, that'd be horrible. <laughs> um, okay. Um, what was that? what was after that? Um, I think it was Seamus versus. Uh... Oh, it was Seamus versus Miz. James versus Miz. But I didn't know if you if you wanted to talk about this entire thing more so than just the IC title itself. I mean, yeah, we can we can we can uh, add a little IC title because a that. lot of the matches tonight were just to hype that up at all, you know. Yeah, I mean, we can talk about some of the IC title crap and some of the real shit. I mean, it doesn't matter. Man. I mean, it was a good show with, with the IC title, and I don't know why they put so much effort emphasis onto it. For it to probably be on the pre-show. You know? Yeah. Especially if this match is going to be on the pre-show, why so much build-up is being put into it, I have no idea why they set out probably an hour to build this match up. Like, uh, but for... here's, here's the scary thing. They're building up the great Kelly so much these past few weeks. It's not even funny. I mean, what if he wins the title? I don't think he has really much of a shot. I think he's just kind of – he's kind of taken on the lines of a big show. He's kind of just the big guy. He's kind of just the giant in the match to make the champion seem more inferior when he does win the title. So if it's a guy like Bo Dallas or if it's a guy like The Miz, who is my favorite to win it, uh, no. just because of how he's been built up over the last few weeks, he's this international superstar, you know, multi-platform artist, whatever they're trying to build him up as – I Putting a title on him actually could help legitimize him because of all the crap that he's had to go through with Chris Jericho over the last two weeks. Mm-hmm. And getting the win over Sheamus. A clean win, mind you. He beat Sheamus today. Mm-hmm. Remember the last time that happened? Never. I can't remember either. A clean win over Sheamus. When was the last time Miz actually won a match? Hmm? When was the last time Miz actually won a match? Miz? Exactly, yeah. WrestleMania 29? Eh, how long ago was that? Two years ago? A year ago? <laughs> Last year. Oh, wait. We're, Almost we're, a year we, and a half ago? We just got off of WrestleMania 30. My bad. But, uh, yeah, that was the last time he won a match, actually. And uh, then he lost it this night after. <laughs> but, I uh, think Miz can get out of that 
irrelevant stage in his career right now to the where now he's just kind of there to be the media ambassador. He's the guy that promotes WWE when they're on the tours and everything. And that's why people hate him because he's not, you know, there every week. He's not impressive. He doesn't do something right, you know. Yeah. But uh and I think his current heel thing right now, which is you know, has a lot of parallels between the O three rock. This yeah. can go somewhere. And I'm mm, not saying maybe. that this can be taken to undisputed title thing, but maybe over time it can be. Right mm-hmm. now, keep this as the focal point of the mid card. Keep Miz relevant in the mid card. Because yeah. he's a common face. He's a common face. He's kind of like Jericho. He's kind of like RVD. He's an established face that getting a win over him could mean something eventually. Yeah. I mean, I have, I'm not really big on the Miz. I never really was a fan of him. But um, I have two favorites in the Battle Royal this Sunday. I have my two favorites are two ultimately buried superstars. It's uh, Adam Rose and Zack Ryder. Those are my favorites going into the match. And uh, we all know Zack Ryder hasn't really been relevant for the past, what, two or three years? And uh, Adam Rose hasn't really been relevant ever since he debuted, which is pretty sad. But it'd be a pretty good uh, thing to see Zack Ryder just come out there, eliminate a bunch of people, and win it. And out of nowhere, people wouldn't expect that. I mean, it'd be cool. I don't. I don't want to put the title on a jobber. But like, this is what this is. This can, this can be his, the kid's chance to uh, bring him back up to. Like a mid card status, like he was in 2012 or 2011. I, he he got that chance when he was U.S. champion. Yeah, and he he did a great job, and they just threw him away. Like, but like, it'd be a great thing to add to his statistics: a former tag team champion, a former U.S. champion, and a current IC champion. That wouldn't be too bad to hear from Zack Ryder. That wouldn't be bad on a resume, but. Considering the guy hasn't really done any, like you said, hasn't done anything relevant in two years, but, there wouldn't yeah, really necessarily be a, there wouldn't be really much of a point to put the title on him, you know? And same thing goes with Adam Rose, at least right now, because Adam Rose, I don't know what WWE, like I said, I think last week, I said maybe maybe Vince isn't highly sold on Adam Rose, Yeah, I but think he is. I don't know what it is. Ever since Santino left, he's kind of just been the joke of the company. That's exactly right. He's just a joke. He's not taken seriously. This guy was supposed to be taken seriously. Hell, this guy's still undefeated last I checked. Mm -hmm. And the crowd doesn't care. Vince doesn't care. And if you don't put any buildup into a guy like Adam Rose, well then... What's the point? What's the you know? What's the reaction going to be when he does win something big? For example, if he does win the IC title, are fans just going to look around saying like, "Oh, okay"? Are they going to be happy that Adam Rose is their IC champion? Probably not, because the IC title is already established. I mean, I don't think that they're going to be not happy about it. I think they'll be pretty happy about it. I mean, Adam Rose is actually really like a really fun guy, and I'm sure if he had the IC title, bring it to the Cloud Express, he'd have. Uh, how can I put this? Like, the the fans would be. Uh, I I really can't put it into words, but they'd be really happy about it. And it's like he's the part. He's like the only fun party guy in the whole industry, and it's been a while since we've had actual an actual fun champion. You know what I mean? Are Are we talking about the internet wrestling fans, aka the Smarks, or yeah, are we pretty. talking about the casual fans that love every face? Because oh. if we're talking casual fans, then I know what you're talking about. It's kind of IWC gross. doesn't care. IWC wants him to go back to Leo Kruger. Right, I do too. I mean, Leo Kruger is like a lot better than uh, than uh, Adam Rose. I mean, they practically gave uh, Bray Wyatt that gimmick, if you know what I mean. See, that's another reason why I think they can't have Leo Kruger come in. Is is well, exactly right. I think that he resembles too much Bray Wyatt. Mm-hmm. With the whole dark and demented, twisted persona and everything, maybe not exactly really to a T. Great. Maybe not exactly to a T. But like I said, like I've said before, there are some um, similarities between the two characters. 
But why? Yeah. Well, that's that's one huge reason, and another reason I think he can't really pull off the Leo Kruger thing anymore. Well, there's two reasons. Number one, like I said earlier, Santino's gone. They kind of need a, you know, a guy to kind of take all the drama. Like I, I can understand when a WWE show or when any wrestling show, for that matter, needs to take the attention off the drama and kind of, you know, warming things up a little bit for some comedy and all that stuff. I can understand that, you know. Yeah, but with the with the Santino thing, Santino had the unique comedy where he was one of the the international guy, and you know we didn't necessarily understand a whole lot of you know all his crap. You know what I mean? Yeah. He was trying to you know connect himself with our world or our country, quote unquote, mm-hmm. and. With the Adam Rose thing, it's kind of the same thing. Different gimmick. And Adam Rose is getting older. I think he's like 35, 36 now. Mm -hmm. He's an old guy. So he's obviously not going to be as nimble as these guys that are in NXT like Adrian Neville and, you know, Tyson Kidd and all of them. I think uh, Tyson Kidd is the same age, isn't he? Tyson Kidd, I think, is 32 or something like Uh. that. Whatever. I might be wrong. I have my years completely wrong now, but... But, yeah, watch, just watch. They're going to bring Adrian Neville up, and they're going to use him as a complete joke, too. I think my two favorites... If my two favorites going into the IC title battle royal... I, I'd have to put three, actually. All right. Miz, Cesaro, mm. and Bo Dallas. Yeah. Just because I mean... all three of them look very strong tonight. Yeah, I'll admit that. But, Except uh, for Cesaro. Cesaro wasn't on the card or on the show. No, Cesaro got beat by Biggie Langston. Oh, I didn't watch that. Yeah. When was that? I, I, I was probably in the shower. I, when that I missed it, too. I I missed it. I got filled in on Twitter. for oh, I, I didn't watch it. I was in the shower, probably. But anyway. <sighs> but anyway, um, let's get the hell off the IC title thing. This is boring. Yeah. <laughs> let's go to some more uh, stuff that was confirmed for... WWE Battleground this weekend. We have the finally awaited match. We have uh, Chris Jericho versus Bray Wyatt. It's confirmed for Battleground, not SummerSlam. For Battleground, a singles match between the two. What do you think? Hmm. Well, Bray Wyatt and, uh, to be honest, Bray Wyatt and Chris Jericho are one of, like two of my most favorite superstars in the company. And I really wouldn't mind seeing two of my most favorites going at it like a lot of fans would. But um, Bray Wyatt, he has targeted Chris Jericho the day he came back. And there was a lot of build-up towards it, like with these cryptic promos, the Wyatt family attacking him every, almost every week. Uh, and this final segment this, uh, last night, it was kind of crazy how... Uh, I, I really can't put this into words either. How Chris Jericho just escaped from uh, Harper and Rowan. And then get tur- turned around and then get attacked by Bray Wyatt. I mean, I, I, I would actually rather see Chris Jericho look strong before the match because he really didn't get a chance to. But I'm guessing this is probably a build up to where Chris Jericho uh, like puts over Bray Wyatt like on these Monday Night Rolls and SmackDowns and like beats him, beats Bray Wyatt too. I mean, I really don't know what's going to go down. I like the build up. Going into Sunday, I think it's unique. Yeah, but I, I don't. I really don't. I really doubt that Chris Jericho is going to lose this match. Oh yeah, but I think that this is a lot of. This is a unique build up going into the match itself because we got you know Ambrose and Rollins who are at each other's throats. They were best friends gone wrong and all that stuff. Yeah, you got the Fatal Four Away who. You know, it's pretty much a tag team match. No one gives a crap about it. You know, you got all these. And then you have the match that people are actually looking forward to because Bray Wyatt, who is exceeding in the ring from SummerSlam of last year when he fought Kane in that horrible Ring of Fire match. Yeah. To the Royal Rumble where he fought Daniel Bryan in the match of the night. To fighting John Cena. And now he's fighting Chris Jericho. He's fought three established 
stars, and he has been in the company for a little over a year. Not even a full year. No, it's been a full year. Oh, yeah, it has. He, it he was a full year about a month ago. Yeah, he debuted it before uh, last year's Money in the Bank. The only thing that I'm scared of when it comes to the Wyatt family, and this is this is talking about all three of them, is I think WWE is starting to run dry with creative things for the Wyatt family to do. Yeah. Because if, if WWE's way of getting heat on the Wyatt family tonight is to beat up on the Usos, who I don't care what anybody says, if you saw SmackDown last week, that is the reason why they are not the face of the tag team division. Because A, there is no tag team division anymore. Because what, you got, you got the Usos, and Wyatt family. You got the Wyatts. You got Cody and uh, Goldust in that right so. garbage star crap whatever going on. Right you got so. Rybaxel, and that's about it. Yep. You have four teams. That's not a tag division. No, not at all. That's a that's a football division. That's an NFC East or something. <laughs> Four teams in the East all trying to fight for that one playoff spot. And if I'm talking about the NFC East, you're not looking at a Super Bowl now, are we? No, not at all. No, that's a diss at Cowboys fans, obviously. But <laughs> but I think WWE is starting to run dry with the Wyatt family. Because now I'm not trying to you know, portray the Wyatt family as something that they're just, you know, they're stale or anything. Because they're really the, not. The promo from today was good, from both of them. Why the Richmond crowd was chanting "boring" is beyond me. Because they're probably idiots yeah, who just kinda... were bored. They had nothing else better to do, so we're going to be known by saying some bullshit. Yeah, probably. You know, Bray Wyatt was sporting that big old shiner on his eye that Flair gave him a few nights ago. Mm-hmm. And like you said earlier, he just the Wyatt family have looked strong going into this match. I can see Jericho winning, and the whole thing about you know how Jericho is the savior of the people, but he's too busy and he can't save himself and everything. I think that's good. I think that's good booking because it makes both of them look strong. It makes both of them look you know unbreakable. If you get what I mean. And it yeah. stacks the odds and it increases my expectations for what is to come. Especially with Bray Wyatt because we've seen how his ring skills have exceeded over the last year. Mm-hmm. And you said, you know, you can't see Jericho losing this match. I personally can't either, but I hope that... I Now see, I can see this match ending in a DQ with having the Wyatt family get involved. And then have the Jericho-Wyatt match in some sort of steel cage some sort of thing to keep the Wyatt family out so that we actually have a match with the Wyatts and Jericho or Chris Chris Jericho and the Wyatt and Bray Wyatt. Yeah. I think that's what's going to end up happening. But I like the storyline. I like where it's going. It keeps me intrigued every week on Raw and I actually can't wait to see what happens at Battleground because this is one of the matches I cannot predict. Yeah. You just kind of have to say somebody. Yeah, I mean, it's it's really unpredictable at this point. I mean, if Chris Jericho does lose the match, I really wouldn't see any point in it. But it'd be a great, like, uh, way to put Bray Wyatt over. I mean, since Bray Wyatt hasn't really got a win over a real superstar yet, this would probably be the beginning of the rise of the Bray Wyatt era, or however you want to call it. And, mm-hmm. uh... Um, I'm so, uh, it's midnight. I can barely even think right now. Uh, and after this, Chris Jericho, and he can build up more momentum towards uh, SummerSlam, uh, Survivor Series, even WrestleMania, and uh, become a bigger star, and uh, possibly get a title run soon after this win. And we just gotta see how this goes. I mean, it's really unpredictable at this point. All right, like we like. I tried to allude to earlier, Dean Ambrose versus Seth Rollins is also confirmed for the battle for the battleground card. We finally get to see these two square off. What do you think about that? 
Well, that's actually the match I'm looking forward to. Uh, a few months, over two months ago, I think it was, uh, Seth Rollins turned on his so-called business partners. Seth Rollins, his Medina brothers. Person. Well, he called them business partners. Oh, are they uh, business partners now? That's what he called them. Uh, Dean Ambrose and Roman Reigns. And uh, Dean Ambrose apparently isn't over it yet, but I'm guessing Reigns is over it. But, uh, since Reigns is after the title at this point, and, and I know he's probably not going to win, but we're on the Rollins and Dean Ambrose subject right now. Um, Dean Ambrose is looking for vengeance, and that's exactly what he's going to get this Sunday. Um, I'm I'm pulling for Ambrose uh, since Rollins really doesn't. Real, I'm going to say something. It might have probably upset some of the internet fans around there. Uh, Dean Ambrose is ten times better than Seth Rollins, so in my opinion. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna open that open that up to you know the nation and everything and see what they got to say about that. I'm not gonna throw my two cents into that. <laughs> I don't but, really um, care. If I, if I get heat for it, I really don't care. <laughs> I love... Hey, go take it to his Twitter, at the T-W-J-E-N-T. Oh, now you give me a plug. You <laughs> hey, you uh, can come check me out, too, at the PTE show, you know. No, you can't do that now. All right, well, um, you can't do that now. You gotta wait after the show to do that. Yeah, I was gonna do it. But, but uh, um... Anyway. No, you, you, said, or you said it, you know, I completely agree with you. I'm looking forward to this match. I'm looking forward to Ambrose and Rollins. But the thing about this is WWE is hyping this pay-per-view up as a high, you know, high caliber show and everything. Yeah. And I got to ask though, is that kind of bad to do before SummerSlam, before Brock comes back? I don't know. I mean, I don't because think it's bad. are they basically are they hyping the show up too much, or are they trying to overshadow SummerSlam? Well, I really doubt that they're going to try to un- overshadow SummerSlam, like you said. But um, I I really don't believe that it's not going to be a good show. Cause I mean, if uh, there's there's no doubt in my mind this is going to be the show, the match of the night. Oh yeah, no doubt. I mean, two. Brothers, uh, or former brothers, however you want to call them, going at it. One going for vengeance. One going. One going for adoption rather than perishment. Uh, it's going to be really interesting to see how this goes, and uh, I'm going to be pulling for Ambrose, since you know Ambrose is better than Rollins. The one thing that I didn't like about tonight, and the one thing I didn't like about the main event, was the fact that they didn't put. They didn't try to put any continuity into when Rollins and Reigns were fighting and they weren't talking about the shield they weren't talking about anything about that they were talking about how Dean Ambrose was at the hospital or how the WWE world title was going to be on the line this Sunday they weren't uh, yeah, it, it, they weren't, just, they weren't they going to put it. any continuity in this They're, they have a main event going on right now which we all saw coming off of last week yeah I mean they didn't even I mean they did they just actually they forgot about Rollins and Reigns. I mean, they used to be former tag team champions together, and yeah. members of the Shield. They just forget about Ron turning on Reigns too, and they're just paying attention to Ambrose. Yeah, they didn't. They didn't mention anything about the Shield. Hell, it seems like they're trying to keep that damn name off television now. Like CM Punk. Oops, sorry. Oh, oh sh- you're not supposed to say that. I'm sorry. You're fans. not supposed to say that. Don't. I know this. Well, this is my show. You can go whatever. <laughs> Got a problem with it? Talk. Tell it to me on Twitter at twjnt. <laughs> At the PTE show, whatever, let us know. But um, I'm looking forward to the match. I'm gonna be pulling for Rollins here, though. Oh, there we go. And are. the reason I'm saying Rollins though is because I'm seeing a lot of faces going over in tonight. I see Cena, I see Jericho, I see the Usos again. I see all these faces going over. Hell, AJ. I can see AJ winning over Paige. Too many yep. faces are winning. We need that one big heel to win, and I think Rollins is the one to do it. Now that they're playing up the injury angle going into Sunday, I can see Ambrose and Rollins fighting for a good 20 minutes and then have Rollins get the win because of the injury or something. Have Rollins look strong. Don't have Dean look weak. Maybe have Dean be the reason um, Roman loses the title. You know? 
yeah. set up that little heel turn and, you know, maybe have Rollins versus, or not Rollins, Reigns versus Ambrose at SummerSlam or something. I think that would look pretty cool on paper. Yeah, but, um, I, I really doubt they're going to turn uh, Ambrose heel this early. I mean, he's doing a great job as a, uh, as a face. I say, I say, give the win to Rollins. Keep him looking strong because he's got a future world title match in his future. You want to keep him looking strong so that way when he does cash in, he's a, he's a credible champion or he, he's a credible contender to the championship, unlike someone like Damian Sandow, which apparently he works at Sonic now, but that's beyond, <laughs> you know, whatever. And he argues with a party guy. Adam and Rose. he argues with Adam Rose about a hot dog. Um, <laughs> it looks pretty good, though. Oh, yeah, if you haven't eaten, but I did, so. <laughs> um, no, that's looking pretty good. Of course, we got to talk about the two biggest things coming out of Raw tonight, and that is, well, we could talk about the first thing, which is about the video game industry. I'm not too understandable on the video games and everything, but the big news going into tonight was seven fourteen fourteen? It was hyped up on Twitter. WWE talked about it on their uh, Instagram and everything, and it turned out to be Sting is going to be a oh, the pre the pre order uh, character going into or with the WWE two K fifteen Sting. You can play a Sting in the video game if you pre order the game. What do you think? Well, I mean, it'd be better since I don't pre order the game, but. Uh... We all know he's going to be a DLC character. Uh, we're going to be able to buy him if we want. But uh, but I don't actually like. I actually really do like the idea of Sting being in uh, the game, since they're. I guess they're hyping up his return to WWE, just like they did last year. Uh, the Ultimate Warrior was in uh, the video game, and he came back. And I'm not trying to sound mean here, but he died the same night. I mean, he hauled no, he Hall of Fame. Hall of Fame, and then he died. Yeah. It's pretty sad, but it happens. But, uh, but yeah, I can see it. you can, it's really clear that WWE is actually hyping a return for Sting. But, uh, we're talking about the video games right now. But, uh, if, I'm sorry, but the window on my phone went down for the roster thing. So, uh, let me get it back up real quick. You can talk if you want. Well, you don't have to mention everybody that's mentioned on the roster. I'm sure I can post that in the comments or something, or the description or something. You don't have to worry about that right now. I mean, yeah, no, but it's right. Oh, I thought I had. It. Okay, never mind. Yeah, we can do that. But uh, I think I think it's a pretty good. I think it's pretty cool to do that. I think you're actually. I think WWE's starting to run out of people. Oh wait, put, I found it. Sorry, I found to, it. To put as the pre-order character because you know you had the Warrior, you have yeah. now you have Sting. You know, there's no one really else left that they haven't put in the video game to, you know, put them out. Hell, they had, oh, excuse me, they had uh, Bruno San Martino as a DLC character last year. You know, yeah. you can't really, you can't really put in a unique character for um, the pre-order thing next year because there really isn't any more. There really isn't any more other than Sting, because you know. But you get to play as two generations of Sting. They had the picture up and everything. You see it in the thumbnail. It's not a fake. It's what happened. It's what we saw on Raw tonight, and um, yeah. But I got I, I got the roster page pulled up. Uh, it's not many. It's not many yet. They're going to do more, of course. But uh, the list is Bray Wyatt, Justin Gabriel, Darren Young, Cesaro and Heyman, John Cena, Hogan, Roman Reigns, Naomi, AJ, and Summer Rae. That is the list. Okay. Not bad. Not bad so far. Well, you're going to be able to pick out everybody who's going to be in the game anyway. Yeah. But, you know, uh, Randy Orton's not confirmed, but you know Randy Orton's going to be in the game. Triple H, yeah. Daniel Bryan, all of them. Uh, yeah, CM Punk is a possibility, too. CM Punk, maybe. Yeah, there's a lot of rumors going around about him being in it. We all know the Wyatt family's going to be in it. Uh, since Darren Young is in it, they're probably going to include Titus. I think and, Owen uh, Hart should be in the game. Who? Owen Hart. Oh, yeah. And, uh, we, I think if, it's the least thing they could do. If Reigns is in the game, we all know Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins are going to be in since they uh, refused to put him in, since they refused to put him in the Hall of Fame, yeah, I mean I don't see why not. I don't know, uh, Dean. I meant uh, not Dean. That's what I'm saying. Batista is probably going to be confirmed too. Batista, yeah. But um, the big rampage. thing though is Sting coming out. You know, I think this is beneficial for WWE. Um, of course they got Kenta coming up too because they just signed Kenta the other day. Prince um, I don't think they signed Devitt yet. 
I think they did. Uh, him, Kenta, and uh, I know Dean that Hart. they. I know WWE is very close to signing Kevin Steen. Yeah, Steen is. If he hasn't right. signed already, he might have signed already, but I the, can't the, wait for that. There's rumors going on that they're actually him, Devitt, Kenta, and JoJo are actually in the performance center, uh, training and stuff. So that's good. But um, you know, I I would like to see Sting come back on TV Me as too. an authority figure. In WWE, I mean, of course, you don't want to do something like, you know, the board of directors sent this guy down like TNA tried to do a few years ago. I I don't want to see Sting as an authority pick. I'd rather see him as a wrestler. He's he's not going to pull off a wrestler thing, especially with what happened with Jerry Lawler two years ago. I think WWE is a little more precautious when it comes to um, their aged wrestlers and everything. Yeah, but like in TNA, he did a great job. I mean, he had no problems. I don't. Because he didn't have to wrestle very often. Yeah, I mean, I, especially I, towards the end. I really don't see a, a problem with him wrestling often, but not too much. His last match is against what? Bully Ray. I think his last match was against uh, Magnus. Was it? Yeah, was it Magnus? I think so. It was either way. It was just. It was a crappy way to go out. That's definitely not how you end a career. Definitely. And, you know, WWE, WWE is going to be right for the picking. I mean, honestly, that's probably all WWE can do is to give him, the, give him an authority figure job, make him come in as maybe the Raw GM or, you know, a new co-owner of WWE or something and kind of have them be, you know, have the authority versus Sting or, you know, they brought Ric Flair back tonight. Maybe have a little Sting and Flair agreement or, you know, a little something there. Mm, maybe. I like I like the idea of having Flair be a Raw GM. I think he'd be excellent for the job. Oh, definitely. But yeah. I think he's going to come back as a manager. I think he could be managing, well, probably not Ziggler, considering Ziggler's now stealing Fandango's bitches. But He's the next guy. Uh, maybe put him with Mitt? No. See, I think I, I think the thing with Miz, and I think he does need a valet, and I think that's where you bring Maurice back. I was thinking. Yeah. Bring Maurice back to valet Miz. I don't know, but um. I wouldn't mind seeing Maurice back. Uh, challenge. Oh, I wouldn't either. Title, possibly. Oh, I wouldn't either. Trust me, I wouldn't either. It'd be a great match. But um, gotta start talking about towards the end of the show here. Of course, we had Ric Flair come out. You know, it was long away, or we all knew from last week, they even promoted it on the pre-show this week, that Ric Flair was going to be returning to WWE. And he had some return a few months ago when he said that he was, you know, with the Shield instead of Evolution. That was the last time we saw him. Now he came back to give his prediction on the Fatal 4-Way for the WWE Undisputed title. And he picked John Cena. That was, like... I, I was like, crap. How hypocritical it is to hype up the guy who is one title reign away from tying yours. Yeah, right. And you're sucking this guy's dick badly. I mean, of course, don't get me wrong. It's fun to see Ric Flair on TV, especially with what he was doing today. I swear I thought he was drunk, but yeah, hitting on Renee like, Young he, and everything. He, he was all over Renee hitting on Renee Young and everything. You know, you don't want to piss Dean Ambrose off. You don't want to do that. No, no. Otherwise, he's going to ask you for some more. <laughs> but, um, yeah, he said he didn't. He picked John Cena to win it all, just like 99% of the world is. He went to the back. Roman Reigns, well, Roman Reigns came out. Then he went to the back. Then John Cena came out. John Cena gave him the title, a little celebrate, a little dedication there. Ric Flair ended up stealing the world title. I didn't even know if anybody noticed that. Uh, Cena ended up walking down to the ring with just the WWE title. I didn't know if anybody noticed that. Flair took the title to the back. He he told him he can keep it. Oh, did he? Yeah. Oh well, there you go. Maybe it's maybe it could be just for the, you know, WWE Ric Flair's title. The new World Heavyweight Championship. They separated the titles seventeen again. times. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. He's an uncrowned world champion. But anyway, we had, um, you know, of course, I think we already... No, did, we didn't talk about Ric Flair, did we? Yeah, we did. No, I mean, like, did I ask you about opinions and everything? Oh, no. Oh. What do you think? I didn't care. You didn't care about Ric Flair? No. 
Why not? I was bored. You were bored. It was boring. You were bored with I mean, Ric Flair. I mean, I know it's kind of hard not to get. I meant to get bored with Ric Flair since he's a really fun guy to uh, watch. I mean, but it's it was actually kind of predictable about him uh, predicting Cena to win because we all know he's a big Cena advocate, or like, just like almost everybody else in the Authority figure type, whatever Hall of Fame, whatever, and. Uh, that I just thought, man, this sucks. I'm probably gonna change the channel. If if this means that he's gonna be back on television, I think I it's gonna be good. I think it'd be pretty cool to see. I doubt um, that he's gonna be on TV. I think it. I think it'd be pretty cool to see on TV. Like I said, I think I'd I'd love to see him as an authority figure on television, like a Raw, like the GM or SmackDown GM or something. Yeah. Any way to see him on TV again? Because it's just Flair in general is just a nice. He's a good character. He's he makes real wrestling fans just feel good, you know. Yeah, I mean, the fans that have been watching for years and years and years, and you still watch Flair, and it's like Flair's still doing his thing at seventy something years old. It's just, good to see. So good. It's good to see, and you see him now, and he looks like he's in good spirits. You know, he looks like he's putting the alcohol down a little bit more. He looks good. Oh, yeah, he looks good. He for looks me. good. He looks fantastic. He was walking around, jucking and jiving today. It look he looked good, and I think that just bringing him back as an on air character again on WWE TV could just be beneficial for the company, beneficial for ratings, beneficial for everything. Yeah, you know. But we ended up having the the three on two handicap match. And to be honest, I don't want to talk about it anymore, so I'm just going to talk really about it. Yeah. We don't have to talk about that horrible moment. <sighs> it happened so long ago, two hours ago. Yeah, it was but, kind um, of boring too. I mean, it was really predictable, but boring. The Basically, there was a disqualification somewhere involved. I don't remember how it happened. Um, um, I think it was Orton and Kane were in the ring too long Yeah, they were, they were attacking, uh, I don't remember who it was. It was ring. Cena. They were attacking Cena, and they got disqualified. Um, the Authority looked good for a little bit. And then Reigns ruined it again. Then Reigns came in, screwed things up. Then Reigns kind of celebrated and everything. Well, Rain, Reigns actually did spear Cena, so... Oh, yeah, yeah. It's Reigns, you know... Actually, he wanted know. to spear Orton. Orton moved out of the way, came through Cena into him, and Reigns ended up spearing Cena, which looked good. That definitely creates the drama, like I said. Uh-huh. Then <laughs> you had Orton RKO Reigns, right? Yeah. No. Wait, no, 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 no. No, Orton uh, RKO'd Reigns. Kane. Ra- yeah, he RKO'd Kane and then Reigns speared uh, Orton. Orton ended up celebrating and then Reigns, of course. Yeah, that that was it. And then Reigns fucking stood tall to end the segment and end the uh end the show. Yeah. I don't I mean, know why WWE is doing this with Roman Reigns. Why no, they're no, going to no. have him look good on every freaking show. Make this guy look unfreaking beatable. The authority has looked bad, I think, for the last two months on every Raw. Yeah. Because every week they have Kane getting speared or Orton getting speared by Roman Reigns. Well, at least they haven't seen this the last. I mean, they're making Reigns into a bigger Superman than Cena. Yeah. And I don't like that. <laughs> Surprisingly. I don't... Hell, I don't like this whole Superman thing with Cena. And I still don't understand how after 12 freaking years, people still decide to throw a punch after the second shoulder block. Mm-hmm. For 12 years, people still do it. Yep. You'd think you know by now. <laughs> when he goes for the five moves of doom, it's shoulder block, shoulder block, you don't throw a punch after the second shoulder block because then you know he's going to duck. Hit the turnaround power bomb, Five knuckle shuffle, there you go. Then we all know he's going to fail at the attitude adjustment and then get his ass kicked. He's going to come back and then win. Exactly. It's predictable. So predictable. Why people still throw the punch after the second shoulder block is know. beyond me. Because, I don't know. But, um... It's getting old. The old, you know, the endings for Raw are getting old. I mean, of course, this is the end of the whole Roman Reigns looking strong and everything. Because next week, I'm sure we're going to have the return of Brock Lesnar, and I'm going to be happier than hell. I'm sure the entire internet wrestling community is going to be happier than hell. Um, 
I'm just not happy that he's a part timer. That's you all know, that's wrong with it. Paul Heyman did mention something about an option C or not option C. That's an Austin Aries. I'm sorry. Um, plan C or something like that. Yeah. You know, you think that could be for CM Punk? You know, maybe if it is, that'd be pretty you cool. Know, I'm gonna be shitting my pants over here in Chicago. But uh, I would, I would throw up rainbows. You'd throw a brain move. Rainbows. Oh, rainbows. That was <laughs> a brain move. <laughs> anyway, um, pretty uneventful raw to say the least. Besides, I mean, it, it was, let me let me be honest with you. It was better than last week. Well, last week just nothing. Nothing really big happened last week. Nothing. Other than solidify the the fatal four way, which is kind of all they did this week yeah. was to. This week was to promote the IC title Battle Royal. That's on the pre-show, by the way. That's on the pre-show. To lock in three matches that probably shouldn't be on this show and should be on the next one at, at SummerSlam. The Ambrose Rollins, the Bray Wyatt Jericho, and the Paige AJ match. Mm-hmm. Three matches that should be on SummerSlam that we're getting early. And we're kind of getting spoiled. It's kind of like eating dessert before dinner. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, you had Sting coming in as the next guy for the WWE 2K15 roster. You had Ric Flair coming back as an on-air personality. And you had Roman Reigns standing tall to end the show like it has for the last two freaking months. Yep. Uh, anything you'd like to say on the show? Oh, shit. That's all I have to say. Then shit. 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 You don't want to analyze it at all? Like I kind of did. I, I just did. It's shit. It's shit. <laughs> it's shit. Don't watch it, guys. No, uh, you should. It's a big waste of your time. Well, if you if you got the WWE Network, you know, you definitely got your money's worth. Oh, shut up, Michael Cole. <laughs> hey, at least I didn't promote the app. Oh, man, that'd be horrible. If you want me to put the link for the app down in the description, I can do that. I don't think you can do that because it's a mobile app. Well, I, no, I can go on the iTunes and be like copy link and stuff. I could you technically suck. do it. You, you shouldn't do that. You know, download the WWE app, guys. You, you, I hate you. <laughs> you coming back next week? To me? Yeah. Yeah, probably. <laughs> you hate me, though. I do. Yeah, we're going to try and get some more people in here, though. Yeah, I mean, it wouldn't be too bad to see another person come off. I mean, you know, it's been the same crap for <laughs> three weeks. I'm not saying that it's bad or anything. It's been a one hell of, like, Instead really of fun. having just two people, I want to try and get, like, a panel. Yeah. And kind fun. of be, like, you know, make it, like, a first take-like thing. We all know we... I think I, I personally, I'm, I want to take over the world. Let's just not add that one man who should touch down not be named. Oh, Chris Benoit? No, no, no. I'm talking about to the panel. Think about it. I think I know who you're talking about, but good. He shall. Oh be yes, I know who you're talking. All right, never mind. All right, all right. Uh, let me give you a hint. Stool. Not Chris Benoit. Stool. Give me a hint. Stool. Okay. All right. That's enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Anyway, um, that's it. That's about it for our raw review this week, you guys. Um, if we had to rate it at all, out of ten. Or no, we did five last week, didn't we? Let's keep the five going. The shape of a toilet bowl is my rating. So an unfinished O. Yep. An unfinished O with a seat cover. Um. <laughs> Follow me on twjent on Twitter. <laughs> There's my plug for you. I'm gonna give this show half of an eight. Okay, I'm gonna be honest with you. I'll give it probably a probably a nine. No, no, probably eight too. Oh, are we rating it out of ten? If you want, I really. Don't I rated it out care. of five, so that's why I said I gave. I'm going to give it half of an eight. Oh, you said four, then you tricked me. No, I cut it. Cut an eight and half. You get a three. Eight and half. Line of a, symmetry, brother. Eight and eight. Eight cut in half is four. No, no. Take an eight, put it on the ground, and cut it in half. That's a three. Like, fold it over. It's a three. Man, you suck. <laughs> All right, Jeez, fine. You, you, got, you, got me the, you got me there. 
Wow. Three out I, of five. Don't make fun of me. I'm blonde, okay? Three, oh, you're blind. No, I'm blonde. Idiot. Oh, you're blind. God, what's wrong with you? I'm sorry. I'm having hearing troubles tonight. Anyway, <laughs> that'll Man. do it for us tonight, guys. Um, God. Make sure you... What? God. What's wrong with you? You are blind. I said blind, idiot. Apparently you're blind. Yep, I am so blind. Anyway, uh, <laughs> that'll do it for us tonight, guys. Um, oh, you know our how links and everything are... Huh? I don't even know how I got on the Skype app. <laughs> I don't even know how the hell you spell that. How did you spell... How do you get T-W-J-E-N-T? What do you mean? If you're blind, how do you know where those are on a keyboard? Well, I had vision at one point in my life. Well, if you're blind, you never did. You don't know that. Oh, so you're one I, of those new blind folk. I'm Batman. <laughs> you bat debit. I'm bad debit. <laughs> All right. Uh, that'll like I've been saying for the last few minutes now. That'll do it for us tonight, guys. Make sure you guys go check out everything down in the description box. Make sure you leave a like. You don't have to add it to your favorites, but if you do, that would be swell. Subscribe. Also, leave a comment. What? Subscribe. That leave a comment down in the description or down in the comment section below. What did you guys think about the show tonight? Um, follow us on Twitter at the BT oh, Show at, at at the T at the T W J E N T. Press follow button. Follow button. <laughs> <laughs> you know, subscribe to me. Two more subs, and we'll hit five hundred. Hopefully, we can do that before Battleground this weekend. I am not even close to that. Huh? I am not even close to that. Five hundred. Yeah, I'm not even close to that. I've been on here for three years, and I don't I'm, care. I'm just now getting to 500. I don't care. <laughs> anyway, on the PTE show, that is the wrestling Jonin. Got it right this time. Mm-hmm. We're signing off, and until next time, peace. Bye.